Okay, we've been doing systems of equations, and let's do some application problems. So an application problem is just a nice way of saying a word problem. And so let's do a couple word problems where we use systems of equations. Let's try this one. The sum of two numbers is 70. Example one. The sum of two numbers is 70. And the larger number is two more than three times the smaller number. The larger number is, what did I say, two more than three times the smaller. OK. And so obviously what we're supposed to do here is just find the numbers. OK, so I would recommend to start this problem, let's let x be the smaller number. And let's let y be the larger number. OK, now since we've been doing systems of equations this whole chapter, it should make sense that we're going to have an equation with x and y. We'll have another equation with x and y. And then we'll try to solve this equation using the methods that we have. Um, addition elimination or substitution. OK, so let's make an equation using the first sentence. The sum of two numbers is 70. How could I make uh, an equation with the sum of two numbers is 70 using x as one of the numbers and y as the other number? x plus y, x plus y equals 70. Sounds great. x plus y equals 70. So that would be the first equation, OK? Now the second sentence, the larger number is, so y is the larger number. The larger number is, that means equals, right? The larger number is 2 more than 3 times the smaller. So I'm going to do 3 times the smaller, and then I'm going to add 2 to that, OK? So 3 times the smaller, and then 2 more than that, all right? So there we go. Once you have your system set up, then you have your methods to utilize, right? We have substitution method or addition elimination method. You could use either here. I would probably use substitution because it's already y equals in the second equation. So if y equals 3x plus 2, I'll just replace that y with 3x plus 2, and then I'll solve it. OK? So go ahead, solve it. You get 4x equals 68, yeah. and dividing both sides by 4, what do you get? 17. All right. If x is 17, that's the smaller number, right? Then you can come back into either one of these to get the larger number. You could plug in 17 there and figure out whatever 70 minus 17 is, or you can plug in 17 here, and it's 3 times 17 plus 2 will give you what y has to be. Okay? So let's do that. y equals. 3 times 17 plus 2. And when you guys do 3 times 17 plus 2, what do you get? What was that? 53. All right. So x equals 17 and y equals 53. So in your homework, you'll have one or two uh, application problems like this. Let me do one more that's a little bit tougher, but it's basically the same format each time. Figure out the first equation. Figure out the second equation and then solve it. Okay. All right, let's try another one. During strenuous exercise, an athlete can burn 10 calories per minute on a rowing machine and 11.5 calories per minute on a stair climber. Okay. So let's see here. An athlete burns 
10 calories per minute on a rowing machine. calories per minute on a rowing machine and 11 and a half calories per minute on a stair climber. All right. If she uses both machines and burns 433 calories in a 40 minute workout, how many minutes did she spend on each machine? Okay. So she uses both machines and burns 433 calories. She burns 433 calories in a 40 minute workout. Okay. So how much time did she spend on each machine? So the question is, how much time did she spend on the stair climber? And how much time did she spend on the rowing machine? Does everybody understand that? So when I get my answers, I'm going to say, OK, we spent blah, blah, blah minutes on the rowing machine, and we spent blah, blah, blah minutes on the stair climber. So my two missing things that I'm looking for are minutes that you spent on the rowing machine and minutes that you spent on the stair climber. Okay? So that's why I'm going to let it equal my x and y, or whatever variables that you guys choose. All right. Oh, maybe we could use R for rowing and S for stair climbing. Maybe that's even better. Okay. So let's let R equal the minutes on the rowing machine. And let's let S equal the number of minutes on the stair climber. Okay, so those are my two missing things. R is going to be the number of minutes you spent on the rowing machine. S is going to be the number of minutes on the stair climber. OK, so I have two uh, equations that I need to come up with. One with how many calories we burn on each machine total, and one with how long we spent working out. So let's do that one. That's easier, right? If R is the number of minutes on the rowing machine, and S is the number of minutes on the stair climber, and my total workout is 40 minutes, what's that equation going to be? R plus S equals 40. Great. So that one's the easier one. Let's do that first. R plus S equals 40. 40 total minutes working out. OK? Now, I'm given a lot of information for the calories. And basically, for every minute I'm on the rowing machine, I burn 10 calories. OK? So for every minute I'm rowing, so however many this is, I multiply that by 10 to get the total calories I burn, right? So if I row for 10 minutes and I burn 10 calories per minute, it would be 10 times 10 to get the number of calories I burned for 10 minutes on the rowing machine. Okay? So, but in this notation, 10 calories for every minute. So 10 calories times however many minutes I'm on the rowing machine will give me the total calories burnt on the rowing machine. Plus 11.5 minutes times however long I'm on the stair climber will give me the total amount of calories burnt on the stair climber. And this is going to equal to the total calories burnt, which is 433. OK? So this equation is a little bit more complex than the previous example. But here we go. I have two equations. And now at this point, I'm ready to do my systems of equations. All right? You can do any method you want. Um, probably on this one, you know, I don't know. It's up to you. I think they're probably going to be the same. You could multiply this top one by a negative 10, which would produce a negative 10R, and then you could do addition elimination. That's one way to go. Or you could solve this for a variable and then use substitution. All right? I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Three. Multiply 3 by negative 10? Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to multiply the whole first equation by negative 10. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to eliminate R. When I have a negative 10R plus a positive 10R, it's going to go away. So I have my first equation is now going to be negative 10r plus, whoops, not plus, minus 10s <laughs> equals minus, what's 40 times 10? 
minus 400. And then I have a positive 10R plus 11.5S equals 433. Okay, addition elimination. I draw this big sign here. I made it put a big plus sign like that right there. And then I literally add straight down the columns. So a negative 10R and a positive 10R goes away. A negative 10S and a positive 1.5, 11.5 will give me a 1.5S. 1.5S equals 433 and negative 400 leaves what? 33. Okay. So you can use a calculator at this point. We'll divide both sides by 1.5. And so what is 33 divided by 1.5? So S comes out to 22 minutes on the stair climber. Okay? Now, if I know I did 40 minutes total, 22 on the stair climber, how many minutes did I spend on the rowing machine then? 18. 18. 40 minus 18, right? Is everybody, I'm sorry, 40 minus 22, which is equal to 18. Okay? Because the total workout was 40 minutes. If you did 22 on the stair climber, then uh, the rowing machine is going to be 40 minutes minus 22, which is 18 minutes. Because those are the only two machines that she used, row machine and stair climber. Okay? So at the end of the last section or two, you're going to have some application problems for using these systems of equations. I might have one, maybe two on the test, but it's basically just write it out, form your system of equations, and solve it using the methods that we've been utilizing. Okay? Okay, great. Uh, what I want to do now is do the very last section, which is inequalities. So we want to learn how to graph inequalities. And it's pretty easy as long as you follow three steps. Okay, here we go, graphing inequalities. Here are your steps, the very first step. And we do this for every inequality. Okay? Pretend it's an equal sign. Pretend it's an equal sign, not an inequality sign, but an equal sign, and graph it, graph the line. Okay, now, there's two things that can happen on your line. It could either be a solid line or a dotted or dashed line, okay? So if the inequality is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, if it has an equal sign, then you have a solid line. If it's greater than or less than and it doesn't have an equal sign, then you have a dotted line. Okay. So that's the first step. You're going to graph the line, pretend it's an equal sign, and then if the inequality was less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it'll be a solid line, versus if there's no equal sign, it'll be a dotted line. Okay? That's the first step. Step two. Pick a test point. not on the line. So you can pick a test point anywhere you want, except on the line. Okay? This might not make sense as we're writing it out, but as we go through an example or two, hopefully it should be really, really clear. Step three. If your test point make the inequality true, shade that region. All right, so if your test point makes the inequality true, shade that region. If your test point makes the inequality false, then you're going to shade the opposite region. Okay? So if test point makes inequality true, shade that reason. 
If it makes it false, shade opposite region. And that's it. Those are our three steps to doing an inequality. Yes? As far as I can go, because it has to be on camera. <laughs> and you can move over here any, anywhere you want. Okay, let's all do an example. Example one. Graph 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 6. Okay? Now, what is the first hint, looking at this problem, that it is an inequality? The sign right here, right? That says this is not an equal sign, this is an inequality, right? So I'm going to graph this inequality. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 6. This is a very typical example that you would have, okay? So step number one, I'm going to pretend it's an equal sign and I'm going to graph that line, okay? So that's, we're just going to follow these steps. Pretend it's an equal sign. Great. I'm going to pretend it's 3x minus 2y equals 6. And I've spent about two weeks learning how to graph lines, so hopefully I should be pretty good at graphing this line, okay? So what is one way to graphing a line? What's an easy way? Just doing a system or a table, right? So if I let x be 0 in my table here, what does y have to be to make this a true statement? Negative 3. Negative 3. How did you get that? Multiplying negative 2 and negative 3. Yeah, if this is gone, then negative 2 times negative 3 is what I need to get 6. All right, if I let y be 0, what does x have to be? Positive 2. OK. Can I graph a line now with two points? Yeah, sure. So graph the line. Now, you're going to make it a solid line or a dotted line in this case? A solid, because the inequality had an equal, equal sign with it. OK? So OK, I'm ready to go. I'm going to draw my line. I have 0, negative 3 as one point. I have 2, 0 as another point. Here's my 0, negative 3. Here's my 2, 0. And I'm going to do a solid line. If it was dotted, obviously you just dot the line. Okay. So there we go. I have finished steps 1 and 2 for this problem. Okay. Nothing difficult. I'm just following the steps. Step number three, we're going to, I'm sorry, step number two, we're going to pick a test point, not on the line. Okay, now, my recommendation to you guys is, if the point zero, zero is available, pick zero, zero, okay? As long as it's not on this line, zero, zero is always a good one to pick. So I'm going to put a little X mark right here. Zero, zero is going to be my test point, okay? So I pick a test point, and I marked it with this X, not on the line. So it's here, here's my test point. Step three, if your test point makes the inequality true, shade the region with the test point. So if this makes it true, I'm going to shade this whole region. If this point makes it false, what region am I going to shade? The opposite side. Okay? And that's it for the problem. So all I have to do now is to see if this test point makes it true or false. What test point did I pick again? Zero, zero. So I'm going to go back to the original inequality. And I'm going to plug in 0, 0. My x value is 0, my y value is 0. And I want to see if this is true or false, OK? So if I plug in a 0 right here and a 0 right here, you're going to get 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0. And what is that? Yeah. 0. So the question is, is 0 less than or equal to 6? Is that true or false? Is 0 less than or equal to 6? Yeah, yeah 0 is less than 6, right? So I'm going to shade the region with the test point. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? Again, simple if you follow these three steps. OK. Let's try another one.
All right, why don't we do, for example, to graph y is less than 2x minus 1. y is less than 2x minus 1. Okay? All right, let's all do this together. What's my first step? Pretend it's... It's equal. Pretend it's equal. Thank you. Y equals 2x minus 1. Can anybody tell me how to graph that? There's a million ways, but pick one way. Yeah, we could do a table of values, sure. You can always do a table of values. If I let x be 0, what is y? Negative 1. And let's let x be, I don't know, 2. If x is 2, what do I get for y? Two times two is four, four minus one is three, right? Table of values, you pick whatever you want and just get two points, basically. Great, move on to the next part. Let's graph it. So I have zero, negative one, and I have two, comma, three. Zero, negative one is right here. Two, comma, three is right here. And I'm going to draw a line through there. What kind of line am I going to draw? Dash. A dashed line, because there's no equal sign with it, right? So a little dotted line running right through, something like this. OK? Now, step number two is I'm going to pick a test point. You can pick any test point you want as long as it's not on the line, OK? So what test point would you like to pick? Sure, we can pick 0, 0 again, as long as it's not on the line. I'm going to use 0, 0. And the question is, when I plug in 0, 0, it, is it true or false? So is 0 less than 2 times 0 minus 1? Is 0 less than negative 1? Is that true or false? It's false, right? 0 is not smaller than negative 1. Negative 1 is smaller than 0. Okay. So instead of shading the side with the test point, I shade the opposite side. And that's it. Any question on that one? Pretty simple, right? OK. Then the last thing that we do is they're going to give you two. OK, and then we have to put them together. And that'll be the last type of problem. So this we call graphing a system of inequalities. OK? So now instead of just one graph, one line, they're going to give you two lines. So let's try this. Y is greater than or equal to um, X plus 3. That's my first line. 2X minus Y is less than 4. Okay. So now I have 2 to deal with. Okay. So here's what I do. I'm going to do them both separately, okay? When I do this line, I'm going to have a region that gets shaded. When I do this line, I'm going to have a region that gets shaded, okay? My overall answer is any place where this got shaded and this got shaded. Does that make sense? So you're only looking for where both of the things got shaded. So an intersection of the shading, okay? So I might use a couple of different colors just to show it's only going to be that region that both places overlap in shading. Okay? All right, well, let's just do one at a time. y is greater than or equal to x plus 3. So I pretend it's y equals x plus 3. And I'm going to graph that line. So if I do a table of values, 0, 3 is one point, And 2, 5 is another point. Okay? So go ahead and graph that first line. It's a solid line because it's greater than or equal to.
But don't do the shading yet, just graph it. One, two, three, four, five. So zero, three, right here. Two, five, right here. It's a solid line, so something like that. Okay. Now, let me use the test point zero, zero. If I do the test point zero, zero, I'm going to plug in zero for x and zero for y. And the question is, is zero bigger than or equal to three? Is that true? Is zero bigger than three? No. So which side would I shade? Yeah, the opposite, okay? So I'm just going to do a really light, I'm shading this side of the line. Okay? That's the end of the first graph. Let's move on to the second graph now. 2x minus y less than 4. I pretend it's 2x minus y equals 4. And let's just do a quick table of values. If I let x be 0, what do I get for y? Negative 4. Negative 4, thank you. If I let y be 0, what do I get for x? 2. OK? So again, you can do any line with a table of values. Just pick numbers that are going to be really good for you, really easy. OK? So 0, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. 2, 0 is right here. So this line, oh, and is this line dotted or dashed? Dashed, dashed right. So I have this dotted line coming up through here. Didn't do the best job of graphing this. Looks like that. OK? Can I use a test point 0, 0 on this line? Yes. Now, is 0, 0, if I plug in a 0 here, minus 0, is 0 minus 0 less than 4? Is 0 less than 4? Yes. yes. OK? So this line, I'm going to shade everything on this side, too. OK? Now, let's get another marker. So this line, I'm shading everything on this side. Okay. Now the question is, so if I extend this out a little bit, and then of course I cut this off a little bit, but you can see that this continues to go up and this one goes out. The question is, where are they both shaded together? Does everybody understand that? So it's only where you see an overlap of blue and black are you going to put that as your answer. Okay. So. Let's see if I can get another color. Where do we have an overlap of shading? So it's this line and everything to the left, and this line and everything to the left. So it's going to be all this. Okay? And that would be your final answer for this problem. Okay. And that's it. That's doing a system of inequalities. Draw one line, get the graph and shaded region of that line. Draw the other line, get the graph and shaded region of that line. Only where the shading overlaps, that's your final answer. Okay? Any question on this? Okay.